Okay, so the last section of this five video series is going to be riffs and additions to your notes. So trills, riffs, everyone calls them something different. For me personally, riffs are very similar to phrases where they can just be like a cool riff like -da 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 -da, that you can learn, memorize, and play in every single key. Um, but the concept is a little bit different. I feel like phrases can maybe be longer and a riff is more so like just a shortened idea, but you can interpret it in any way that you want to. That's just kind of how I think about riffs. So the idea of riffs is, like I said, very similar to phrases. You can create riffs and repeat them as well. For example, <laughs> Like you can create the idea, create it within the same key, starting on a different note, change it to another key. You can just kind of create an idea, copy and paste it within the key. You can change it to a different key as well if it's a song that has a lot of chord changes. Or whatever the case may be. So that's a way to think about riffs. Just come up with a short idea. You can start on different notes within that key with the same idea in mind and just repeat the idea over and over and over again to call to create that really cool riff. You can also do it within different keys as the song goes on and the chords change. You can copy and paste that riff, riff within the next key when the chord changes. That's the really cool part about riffs. I love messing around with those. It's always fun. Another cool thing that I want to talk to you about is trills. So basically being able to add like a half step right before a note, which I tend to do a lot of times in my playing. And you'll hear this in a lot of my videos. When I play, I oftentimes add a half step note right before the note that I'm trying to play uh, to kind of decorate the start of a phrase. So if I'm playing E, like if I'm playing that phrase, before the E, I'm going to add a D sharp so I can trill from the D sharp to the E like ba -dum -ba -da -da -da, ba -dum -ba -da -da -da, but I'm not going to tongue the transition from the D sharp to E. I'm going to tongue the D sharp and slur to the E so that it can give that E a cool effect at the beginning of the sound of the phrase. Let me play an example. This is without the trill. This is with it. So that adds a lot of decoration. I also tend to do that when I'm playing the note B as well. Like I'll add a B flat. So I have the B flat here and then I'll tongue the B flat and slur to the B at the start of the phrase like instead of B, B, I'm gonna add a slight B flat before the B to decorate the sound of that B so I do that a lot of times in phrases you hear me all the time doing it and i'm going to demonstrate to you what that sounds like here i'm going to play some riffs and i'm also going to add the but i'm going to add So man guys, there's 
so many things I could talk about with improvising, chromatics, that's a big one. There's so many things, but these are the five main topics that I tend to think about when drafting and creating my solo in my head on the spot. I'm so glad that I was able to share them with you. If you're confused about anything, you know, just leave a comment on whatever video that you're confused about. You can ask me basically in the comment and I will respond back to you. But I hope this is super educational for you. This is fun for me to make. I'm glad I was finally able to just sit down and make this video and talk about just these cool tips and tricks that maybe not everybody knows about. Some people know about it, but not everybody knows about it. And also some people learn how to solo from other teachers or with other um, backgrounds in music, whether that be jazz or learning gospel and learning how to solo in gospel. You know, genres play a huge part too, which is why I tried to kind of use different random backing track styles in this series, like a little bit of jazz, a little bit of gospel, a little bit of funk, just so that you can realize that really and truly a lot of these things you can implement into every single style of music and i think that's just a beautiful part about music and it's a beautiful part about improvisation in general it's allowing you to be able to just be yourself to be able to create a solo and to be able to just share your sentence share what you want to say share your voice through your music and these tools to me personally have helped me a lot to be able to do that through my soloing and through my music and i hope it will be a great help to you so thank you again for listening this is so much fun and if you want to see something again like this in the future i will now take the time to sit down and record it so if you're actually interested in seeing something like this again or having another five point video series just talking about any other subjects saxophone related please don't hesitate to let me know okay peace and love bye